Let's look at the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego one more time today. Isolated statement made by them in the third chapter of the book of Daniel. Whichever one of them spoke it, it attributes this quote to each and every one of them. <laughs> Verse number 18. Be it known unto you, O king, that we will not serve your gods, nor worship the golden image which you have set up. Again, to summarize, to briefly <laughs> give you the sparks notes on this story. An evil king sets up a massive idol, builds a massive statue, whether in his image or some other. I believe it, it said it was in his image. I'm not exactly sure. But he builds a massive statue in his area of the world. He calls everybody in that area of the world to come and bow down before the statue. And all the other kings are conspiring and consenting with him. In the area, or the leaders, not kings, but I don't know if they were leaders, but the leaders of the provinces and, the, and their cities in the area come in. And everybody who lives in that area of the world is called in and they must bow down to this statue that this king, Nebuchadnezzar, has built, or else they're going to be thrown in a fiery furnace. But it's large enough to cremate somebody alive, essentially. And you know the story three men out of the thousands who were there would not bow down. They stood their ground because they served the living God. And they said, we shall have no other gods before our God. Our God is the only God. And no matter the threat, no matter what you say, King, we're not going to bow down to that idol you built, that statue. We're going to stand. And we're going to stand for God Almighty. And the king gives them an ultimatum, gives them another opportunity. They say no. He turns the furnace up seven times hotter, the Bible says. And he tells his strongest men, his best men, to take these three men down and, and to bind them to arrest them, to put handcuffs on them, ropes on them, whatever, and throw them in the furnace. And the Bible said the fire was so hot that when these men got near to throw them in the furnace, it killed them. But then these three men in that fiery furnace were not burnt, were not harmed, were not sinned. Not one hair on their head was sinned. That's a miracle. And God Almighty stood with them and visibly to the evil king, and the king saw it. Not only were they unharmed, but they walked away completely healthy and whole and alive and they should have been killed i want to consider the absolute insanity of all this though i mean can you imagine these guys telling their story <laughs> can you imagine them telling their story to somebody uh, i mean to, to individuals who weren't there maybe maybe their grandkids maybe just people who heard about it someone asked them what's the most interesting thing that happened to you oh i was arrested and convicted to capital punishment what did you do Oh, I wouldn't bow down to a statue. That's what I did. <laughs> Can you imagine them describing and explaining to anybody with any sense of reason, the common sense, what exactly their crime was that had them punished, convicted with the death penalty? They didn't kill anybody. They didn't steal. They didn't commit any felonies. <laughs> what they did was to stand up in defiance of an evil king, a dictator. And I can hear somebody asking, oh, you're joking. You, that's, you're, you're kidding me. You got, can, you got sentenced to death for simply standing up and not bowing down to an eye? Are you kidding? Oh, really? 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 I mean, their infraction here, their crime is so novel, so trivial. In the realm of common sense and logic, you get sentenced to death because you wouldn't fall on your knees before a statue? Are you kidding me? But friend, in reality, this is the ultimate crime in this world. Historically, it's been the crime every tyrant has enacted. The crime of independence, of defiance, and of servanthood to God and God alone. Worship God alone. I'll worship only at the feet of Jesus. His cup alone, my holy grail. There'll be no other gods before me. Jesus alone will never fail. This novel, seemingly trivial act is the greatest felony you can create in a world governed by the powers of darkness. Although broken and fractured by the cross of Jesus Christ, it is God's world. I'm not saying the devil is bigger than God. But the system of this world is darkness. The system of this world is governed by the kingdom of darkness. The system of this world is evil. It is sin. And the prince of the power of the air roams to and fro, seeking whom he may devour, that he may steal, kill, and destroy. And he demands and commands total and complete submission to him. And the primary, premier 
infraction and crime anybody can commit would be to commit their all, their worship, their will to the God of heaven, the Lord of the hill. You commit your will to the Lord of the hill. You're going to infuriate the fury and wrath of the one who looks to steal and kill and destroy because you serve the Lord of the hill. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. This is the greatest crime you commit. And historically, it has even been evidenced in tyrants who are ruled by the kingdom of darkness. That rules the system of this world. Love not the world, neither the things of this world. For if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And the worst thing you can do is not submit to the intimidation and threat of the kingdom of darkness. Lucifer. And that's what he wants out of every one of us. Bow before me. Worship me. He took Jesus to the desert. Worship me. Worship me. I'll make your life easy if you worship me. Don't defy me. Don't stand against me. Worship me. Jesus said it is written. It is written. <laughs> you shall serve the Lord your God. Only him alone you shall worship. I'm not going to bow before you. And guess what? The devil set his eyes against Jesus Christ. And he opposed him vehemently, violently even unto the cross and to his own destruction and demise. He didn't know he was dealing with the fourth man himself. <laughs> well, he might have known. But the Bible says had they known, they wouldn't have crucified him. If he knew what the cross was going to do to him, he would have never led the Lord Jesus to it thinking he was going to be victorious. But the cross was his victory. The cross is our victory. Because he satisfied the wrath of God by his shed blood. He was our sacrifice. But one way you could you could surmise this, I mean, friend, you don't have to do much. All they did was stand. And that's all you have to do to infuriate hell and to, to trigger the nerve of the evil of this world. Just stand. Just don't submit. Just serve God. I've experienced this myself. I'm not being harsh or critical. I love people who've done evil, but I've experienced the evil and corruption of this world where you don't have to do anything wrong technically. You just have to stand. What little I went through, I guess technically we committed an infraction. But I, I endured, and I've told people this story. I endured persecution and imprisonment for doing nothing. My crime was wearing the wrong political hat, and you could surmise my crime too. I stood. I stood against corruption that, that stole. I stood against corruption that lied. I stood against corruption that has killed. I stood up for God and truth and for the sovereignty of the American people in a republic that was violated their will. I stood and I said, no, we love you, but this is wrong. This is evil. The people are the power in America. I stood for God. I stood for the right things. I stood against abortion. I stood against sodomy. I stood against sin. I stood for liberty. I stood for the blood of the many brave men and women who have died for the liberty of this nation, that it not be corrupted and compromised and stolen. I stood up because what I have was freely given. And I told somebody, they said, what were you doing in a federal institution? I said, oh, I wore a hat. And we were basically forced to confess crime. And if we did commit some kind of crime, I don't know. Technically, I guess you're not supposed to wear a hat. <laughs> You're not supposed, but that was my crime. <laughs> Wearing a political hat in, in the United States Capitol. Wow. Surmise as standing, and I stood against evil and corruption. And it lashed out, and it lashed back, and so vehemently and violently that that you you did something that is lower than a traffic violation, a a low misdemeanor. They punish you as if you committed a felony. And I told somebody, they asked me, what, what, what did you do? I said, my crime was I wore a political hat at a political rally. I entered a building I was allowed into, lawfully and legally. Really? <laughs> what? My friend, that's all you have to do. That's all you have to do. And I, I went to, to the, the, the arena of my great crime, and I said, you know what, if I did something wrong, I apologize. But I don't think I really did. I said that, you know, I was coached. You, you got to say this. You got to say this or else they're going to punish you even worse. And I did it in hoping, you know, to be honest, to be true at the same time while apologizing for any ignorance I did. But I, I honestly don't believe I did anything other than hit a nerve of evil that demands submission and defies and seeks to destroy all who stand against it.
All I did was stand. I didn't say a word, really. I didn't. I didn't do anything. I didn't touch anything. I. I, <laughs> I touched a man and prayed for him. Touched a man and told him, "Thank you for your service, a police officer." You can see this, though, friend. Even in in consider Donald Trump, God love him. He hasn't done anything wrong, but he was loved, celebrated. But the moment he stood, the moment he stood above the crowd, and he wouldn't bow and kneel the rest of them. Oh, we're coming against you. And they tried to put him in prison. And he did spend a, a minute or two in prison. <laughs> he had a mugshot. And then they try to take his life. What has he done? Wear the wrong hat. Stand. And all hell's coming against you. Just don't bow in submission with the rest of them. That's your crime. And friend, that's the greatest crime you commit in this world. Because it defies the powers of darkness. It will not submit to corruption and evil. And evil is going to unleash all the, the, the evil bears against you. This is the devil's rendition here in Daniel chapter 3 of hell. He builds a fire. Think about it. He's doing what God does. God created hell for the devil and his angels. The devil is a copycat. He has nothing original. He plagiarizes God and everything he does. And he takes what God does and perverts and plagiarizes it by perversion. This is his rendition of hell. He builds a fiery furnace. God created hell, a burning fire for the devil and his angels and for all who disobey and defy him. God created hell. And in the end, every soul who dies in sin is cast to hell. Every soul who would not bow the knee to Jesus Christ is cast to hell. The devil builds an idol. No doubt he's in it. He won't show himself many times. He's starting, he comes out the stronger he gets. But the devil hides himself in his camouflage until he gains strength. You're seeing it now in society. He was cloaked, he was covered, he was camouflaged for many decades. Now he's coming out for worship. And the devil, this statue may have been built in Nebuchadnezzar's image or whatever image it was built in, but it is a, a statue in which Satan himself is personified. And he wants worship, and he seeks worship and obedience and submission to him. And then he builds a fire and says, okay, I'm God. You don't worship me just like God does. I'm going to do what God does. And he wants to take the, the God followers the Christians and throw them in his hell and throw them in his hell he creates a hell it's his rendition and he says violate my command disobey what I say you're gonna burn and historically like I said this is what tyrants do because the devil's in them using them and all you have to do you don't have to kill somebody to, to, to earn capital punishment when corrupt men rule you want to know how to identify corruption politically? This is a king here we're speaking of. All you have to do is stand against them, and they'll come after you. They defy your right, conflicting opinion, of opposing viewpoint. They cannot have it. Freedom of speech. Oh, they censor. They suppress. We're dealing with tyrants here. We're dealing with tyrants here in this world again. Look at all the evidence, and all you have to do is stand against them. All you have to do is say what they're doing is wrong. I don't want to get that shot. No, you're going to get that shot or we'll silence you. You bow, you submit, or you'll pay the price. We'll throw you in the fire. And I'm all for freedom. I, look, I don't care what you believe. I don't care what you want to believe. I do care because I love your soul because there's only one God because there's a heaven and a hell. I do care, and I'll tell you the truth in love. But friend, you can do whatever you want. And if you go and cry out to the, to the God of Baal, cut yourself scream you can have that platform you can scream all day and I'll let you do it in front of the crowd because you have the right to do that the freedom to do that but you're going to suffer the consequences of doing that in the end because it's not truth but I love you and you can scream all day you can say whatever you want you can believe whatever you want you can vote for whoever you want you can say I don't care Do I do care but you know I, I respect your freedom I respect your liberty I respect your right your free will to do and say whatever you want. Oh, even if it's wrong. Even if we disagree. But evil will not afford you that. Evil will not. You submit or you burn. And you could argue it's the same for God. Absolutely. But the holiness of God. The justice of God. You submit or you burn. It's the same thing, I suppose. Yes. The devil's rendition of hell. The difference is though God is not forcing you like they are. God is giving you the option. God says, choose you this day who you will serve. God lays it out. God says, okay, there's hell and I'm holy. I can't have sin in my heaven. I love you. 
I'm asking you, I'm begging you, I'm going to move again and again. I'm going to send preachers, I'm going to send prophets, I'm going to send evangelist apostles. I'm going to send prayer warriors. I'm going to send witnesses. I'm going to send my spirit again and again and again. I'm going to send my only son to die on the cross for you. Surely you'll hear him. God says, please choose me. Look, it's hell. I'm holy. I'm perfectly just. I can't allow sin into my heaven. If you reject me, you'll go to hell. I will not force myself upon you. You can choose who you will. Come unto me. I'm not willing that any perish, God says. Come to me, whosoever believes in my son. My son took hell for you. My son died on the cross for you. Come to me. Please come to me. God pleads. He's not going to force, though. And he doesn't say you have to bow to the knee to me. In the end, every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess. But they'll do it of their own free will when they see him. No one's ever been forced by God. And he could force everyone. The devil will force you. The devil will coerce, manipulate. God will say, have your own way, but please pray, not your will, my will. You can do whatever you want. God will not violate your will. God will call. God will say, I love you. God will say, I love you. God will say, I have a plan for you. God will say, you're better off with me. God will say, you'll live forever with me. You'll have life and life more abundantly with me. I know you. I love you. I gave my life for you. I have a plan for you. I know the plans I have for you. I have a purpose for you, God will say. But you don't have to choose me. You can do as you will. The devil will say, submit to me and burn or burn. God will say, the consequence is eternal fire and torment and torture and suffering and weeping and wailing and gnashing teeth in fire. You will burn if you reject me. God will show you and he'll let you choose. Friend, if you reject Jesus Christ, you choose the fire. If you don't bow to him, you choose it. But you're not forced. The devil and every evil tyrant that works for Satan will force. And we need to understand that, that it is literally this scenario. That if you choose sin, you go to hell. If you cower with the crowd, it, look, it's, it's either, you could say this way, you either burn now by the devil's fire, or you burn forever in God's fire of judgment. The devil forces, intimidates, and you could argue via persecution, trials, and tribulations, scorches even those who follow him. And as a Christian, it is either you choose, you could interpret this scenario, even though it's not literal in everybody's life in every scenario. But you either you choose the fire now in persecution and trials and tribulations on a fight of faith to eternal life in heaven, or you choose to burn then. That's literally the scenario, you could say. We don't take these things seriously enough. Look, whoever sins is going to hell. That doesn't mean you don't... You don't fail every day in Christ. You fail some way daily. You're not perfect. But if you fornicate, you're a practicing fornicator, a practicing adulterer, a practicing homosexual, a practicing transgender. If you kill, if you lie, if you're a practicing drunkard, what does the Bible say? Not what I say. No, I didn't make the rules. I didn't create this world. What does the Bible say? If you practice these sins, you're going to hell. It's that serious. And you have Christians today, the Bible said forbidding to marry, living together without the, the godly covenant of marriage, divorcing, committing adultery, and divorce, thank God there's forgiveness for that. And, and many times it's necessary. And God can heal it. I'm not saying, you know, you're going to hell if you've been divorced. That's not, all, not what I'm saying. I'm just saying the covenant of marriage is taken so lightly. Fornication, adultery, drunkenness. And people are laughing at all off and taking it so slightly and bowing down, not understanding that these things will lead you to eternal hell. The Bible says it. It is literally that serious. You may think, oh, I've lived well for so many days. I serve God. I love Him. He won't mind just a little bit of failure. That little bit of failure could lead you to eternal hell. It is literally that serious. It is literally the scenario. You can bow with the world, do what everybody else is doing, and not suffer the consequences of the evil king of this world but you'll burn an eternal fire or you can choose the heat now. You live a holy life. You try to live a holy life. You're sanctified. You're justified. Say, Lord, I'm not perfect. I'm going to fail every day, but I'm not going to commit fornication. I'm not going to commit adultery. I'm going to do my best, Lord, to live for you. I'm not going to cast my pearls before this one. God, I'm going to serve you with my, my heart. I bow only at your feet. I worship only at the feet of Jesus. I'll suffer the consequences. I'll stand. That's all you have to do. That's really all God is requiring. Stand. Stand. 
that's going to get you in trouble with the kingdom of darkness because you're going to stand out when you stand up. That's going to bring persecution your way. You're going to become a lightning rod for the fire of this world, for the heat of this world. But that's all you have to do. Stand, Paul said, having done all. Stand. What does it mean to stand? Stand means you, you're unashamed. You proclaim. You, you could surmise many things in a, a singular direct definition of that word biblically. Stand. It means, among all that it means, we'll give two, two potential definitions of it, two definite definitions out of what all it could mean scripturally. To stand means you make it known who you are. I'm unashamed. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I'm a Christian. You stand up when everybody's bowing down. Everybody's going to look up you know, from their low point, their vantage point. They're going to, out of the corner of their eye, see you or turn their head. Yep, we know they're not with us. So you say, I'm not with this world. I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. I'm standing. Where everybody else is kneeling, I'm standing. I'm a Christian. It means you evangelize. It means you make it clear who you are. I'm not ashamed. This is who I am. You need Jesus. I follow Jesus. And at the same time, you can surmise in that. Evangelism. But a declaration to the world of who you are, having done all to stand. It also means not to be moved. To stand, it means you are where you are and you're staying where you are. Your mind is fixed. You're not double-minded. Committed. The world is so double-minded and unfaithful in these last days. Friend, if I commit to somebody, I commit. If I commit to Jesus Christ, I am committed forever. I made a choice and I made it forever. You're still Lord. You're still my Father in little or much. I can still feel His touch. You are still Lord to me. You are still Lord. You're still my Father. In little or much, I still feel His touch. You're still Lord. A long time ago, I made a choice. And I made it forever. He is my Lord. I've decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. If I commit, I commit forever. If I commit to Jesus Christ, I commit forever. You've got a world that's momentary, unfaithful, (laughs) fair-weathered. They commit when the sun shines. And this is why the divorce rate is so high. Not only because of the the temptation of fornication in these end times, and the the demons of lust that have been unleashed on this nation thanks to our ungodliness. We let them in. And we're keeping them in through pornography, through the evil in our entertainment and our music and our movies, and they're going everywhere. And wreaking havoc and tempting and tempting, and many are falling. Lust is, a, is at an all-time high in America. And it's because of the demon spirits that have come in, that we've allowed in, that our forefathers pushed out, our forefathers of the faith in this nation, by righteousness, by righteous prayer, by spiritual warfare, by holy living, by morality, by the Word of God. Not only are, are the border walls down, but friend, the spiritual hedge is down as well, and primarily. And the demons of hell that were kept out by the hedge of God are coming in. And they're tempting and tempting and many are falling. But to stand, you're saying this is who I am. And this is where I'm staying, no matter what. Bring on the heat. Bring on the fire. This is my hat. Look at my hat. This is what I stand for. And that's what's going to get you in trouble. That's what's going to bring hell against you. This is what I stand for. That's your great crime. <laughs> And the devil, Jesus said, I'll try to throw you in prison just for being a Christian, just for proclaiming the name of Jesus Christ. And he did it all throughout this book, and he's done it all throughout history, and he's going to start doing it again in these last days, just like he's doing it around the world. You just got to wear the hat, and that's the crime. You support Trump? <laughs> you, What triggers you about that so bad that you throw somebody in prison? Oh, that's a crime. You know, technically, you could bend the law to say it is, and I'm, I'm, I apologize for that, because you have to, I guess. But I don't apologize for standing against evil and corruption and those who steal and kill and destroy, ultimately the devil himself. I pray for you. I love you. I don't hate anybody. But I don't apologize for standing up for truth against that which is wrong. And nobody should. It should Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego apologize? No. What great crime is this? 
you got people I mean thank God they're doing what they're doing to sex trafficking whatever I think it's a big distraction I, I don't know what they're distracting from but some something when they you know when they come after evil I mean there's evil everywhere but thankfully they're cutting down and coming against sex traffickers and such seemingly you never know if it makes the news you know you, you wonder why because there's so much else going on and the corruption is so deep but we pray that God changes their hearts well, thank God they're doing that, but friend, there's things going on in this world. People committing legitimate crimes, and you're seeing as the tyranny arises and the Antichrist arises, it's the people who stand are, that are being incriminated, that are being demonized. For the great crime of speaking truth, and that's the way it's been through all history, going all the way back to Nebuchadnezzar's evil empire. You wouldn't submit to me and that is such a novel, trivial thing. Just here, like, like I compared to illustrate, I wore a hat in the building, I got thrown in jail for it. What? <laughs> we didn't break in. And, and the, the judge, I think he was a nice guy, I don't know. I, I don't know what his motivations were, but I respect him. I don't have anything evil to say about anybody, but I mean, man, wow. <laughs> and then two years probation and 100 hours community service and everything else that I've been through. Man, <laughs> that's all you have to do. It's novel, it's trivial, but it's the greatest crime you can commit. When you're dealing with evil, it's to oppose them and to not submit. To be independent and to be dependent upon God. These three wouldn't bow a knee and that, that gets them capital punishment. That is insanity. What'd you guys do? You, you would get sentenced to capital punishment? Oh yeah, we wouldn't bow down to a statue the king built. Are you serious? <laughs> what? Well, that's the way it is. But friend, Jesus said, blessed are you who are persecuted. And he said, if you lose these things, if you endure these things, I'll give you a hundred times more in this life and then in eternal life. And great is your reward, and the sufferings of this life are not worthy to be compared to the glory that should be revealed. And stand your ground, friends. Stand up for something. Don't live a compromised coward over life. Stand for life. Stand for God. Stand for truth. Stand for something. Do something with your life. We're all going to leave this world eventually. Regardless of the threat, I'd rather leave it on my feet than on my knees. Lord, I'll stand for you. We will stand. Regardless of the threats, regardless of the potential persecution, I'd rather stand for Jesus than bow at the feet of evil and suffer the consequences now and reap the reward then. Great is your reward. The reward's so great. The real king is coming back. It's not a leader, it's not a president. We pray for the right president. And I support and will vote for the right man who's running for president. But we don't bow to the knees of evil. We stand up for God. I bow only for Jesus Christ. And at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. He is the king. And the king is coming back. And the king is going to rule this world. You can bow before an evil tyrant who might rule this world for a few years. And succumb to the intimidation and pressure. But friend, when he comes, and he's going to rule forever. And his empire is going to rule the whole world from Israel forever. And Israel will dominate the world forever. Some people don't like Israel. I'm sorry. That's going to be the only nation left standing in the end. Look at every nation, even this nation, how great it is and how it's struggling right now for its very existence. This one's still there. This one will be there forever because it's God's nation. Oh, I love America with all my heart. I stand up for America. But in the end... <laughs> The king will reign from Jerusalem, the new Jerusalem. And Israel will be the last empire standing. You may not like that. They're not committing genocide. They're defending themselves. War is war. Someone committed an act of war against them. God forbid, God have mercy, but the world is turning on them. But it's all going to lead to their greatest victory and their greatest hour when they finally say, King Jesus, you are Messiah. When the false Messiah turns on them, and betrays them and tries to commit legitimate genocide against them. No doubt he's a student of the anti-Israeli propaganda going on in the world right now. And he's probably the, the master teacher.
But Jesus is coming. Serve Him. He'll rule this world forever and ever with power and with glory. It's better to suffer the consequences now by allegiance to the King who will rule forever than to serve a King who will succumb to the King and then be <laughs> conquered by the King who will rule forever. Think about it. Common sense. Stand for something. Don't let your life be wasted. Jesus loves you. He died for you. He stood for you. He went to the cross for you. He'll take your sins away. Stand fast in the liberty. Jesus loves you. We're not promised tomorrow. He could come at any moment. Trust in Him now. Stand up for Him. Don't cower. Don't bend or bow to evil. Bow and worship only at the feet of Jesus and stand. Do something with your life that counts. Stand for something. Don't join the crowd. Stand independently, individually for the one man who stood for you versus all of hell. Jesus loves you. Stand up for him. Ciao!